this month we'd like to talk about three topics. The first is around changes at the European Central Bank. The second is a comment about corporate earnings. And the third, sadly, is about the upcoming UK election. We've seen a change recently in the leadership of the European Central Bank, with Mario Draghi stepping down after his eight-year term, replaced by Christine Lagarde. Draghi had quite a controversial tenure during his time at the ECB, presiding over negative interest rates and quantitative easing. But he's generally regarded by many as having saved the euro by stating that he and the ECB would do whatever it took to protect the currency. Lagarde and her team face a number of challenges. The question about how effective monetary policy is, is increasingly coming to the forefront of policy discussions. Although Draghi was successful in saving the euro, he was much less successful in terms of generating, through monetary policy, stronger economic growth and reaching the 2% target inflation. The question for Lagarde will really be, will she be able to develop policies on the monetary side that will actually be able to achieve those sorts of targets? Or will we need to see much more coordinated policy in terms of fiscal reform and structural reform to allow the ECB and the Eurozone to generate faster growth? We think it's going to be a tough ask for the ECB to really drive stronger economic growth using monetary policy. And we think policymakers elsewhere will have to take on more of the burden if we are to see the sort of economic growth that the ECB would like to see. We've had a raft of corporate earnings coming out of the US over the past few weeks, and in general the results have been quite positive. Somewhere over 70% of companies have reported better than expected earnings, and that's a higher percentage than we've seen for some time. Now the underlying growth environment has been a bit challenged, but this is still a decent result for corporates in the US and bodes well for corporate profitability and perhaps for earnings growth going into 2020. You now have a tailwind from three Fed rate cuts over the course of this year that should help growth re-accelerate, albeit from a relatively low level, sometime in the middle part of 2020. That, combined with the possibility of some sort of a trade deal between the US and China, could provide a bit more support for equities in the US and more broadly. Now we have to sadly turn to the painful question of UK politics and the upcoming general election more specifically. The range of outcomes, as it has done with Brexit, remains extremely broad. Current polling suggests the Conservatives might be able to squeeze out a majority. But faith in those polls is not particularly high. When we think about a range of outcomes, we'd argue that a conservative majority and a deal would be taken positively by UK assets, notably equities. A Labour majority with all of the uncertainty around economic policy would probably be taken negatively by risky assets in the UK. And a hung parliament depends very much on which coalition actually would form a government. A conservative Brexit coalition would look very different from a Labour Lib Dem scenario. From a portfolio construction perspective, we continue to take a cautious approach. We continue to be globally diversified in terms of our asset allocation, even though we acknowledge that UK assets, notably equities, look cheap relative to their own history. We'd like to get a bit more certainty and a bit more clarity before we increase our UK exposure. 